Hello and welcome to another maintenance vlog from a very warm engine bay. I've just been fixing the raw water system on the generator and had to run it for half an hour. Please excuse the sheen on the forehead. So this one comes from Vangaray in New Zealand again. This week I removed the steering wheel to check the steering shaft or the axle hub. I also wanted to figure out how it fitted with the rack and pinion set behind the helm just in case I needed to fix that or service it in the future. Even though I think the rack and pinion was made by Amel as a custom design, the cables themselves are made by a company in Italy called Ultraflex. So the first job was to remove the hub at the centre of the wheel to get to the nut below. But the wheel itself needed a bit of gear puller persuasion. So the hub surround itself is held on by two through bolts and you need somebody on the other side to help you take them off. Okay, ready. Those are the nuts at the back of the screws. I thought they were threaded in, but they're not, they're bolted in. Um, so you've got to get somebody on the other side to catch those. And there's washers as well. <coughs> Lost one behind the back of the autopilot. It's literally just sick of flex to place. So a bit of penetrating grease, just to loosen things up a bit. And a pipe wrench to get things moving. Next there are three bolts, so again you need somebody on the other side to help you with this. Okay, start that side, yeah? Ready? Got it. Uh, port side. Top. Got it. So that disc set flush against the, the bulkhead there um, and so in order to get the uh, puller behind it I took the uh, rack and pinion set off and pushed it forward um, and taken it out of its mounting and then it's got something to brace against. I thought that disc might have been screwed on because the thread's showing but actually it pulls straight off. Um, it's a good job I saw this job done only yesterday, uh, otherwise I might have done some damage to that. Bryce on uh, Yin Yan, who's parked next door, he was doing the same job so I thought I'd uh, take a look at what he's doing. But that was actually spined on rather than actually uh, screwed on. Actually it was easier than I thought that. Good. So what I wanted to do really was uh, take this rack and pinion set apart and uh, check the teeth. Um, but uh, I've got a good mate on the opposite side of the pontoon who's also got an animal who's doing just that job. Um, and he's decided to take the whole rack out. And uh, actually what he found was the teeth aren't, aren't too bad. Uh, his boat is five years older than ours and he's got, got a far more play. He's got like a quarter of a turn play on the, on the wheel, um, which is, uh, is not good. Uh, we've got about an inch play on the wheel or two inches maybe. Um, and so having had a long talk with him and uh, seeing what he's had to do, I made the decision to actually just leave it because uh, it's quite a mission to get this out. You've got to take the whole thing apart. I've taken the wheel off and I'm going to give that a bit of a clean on the axle and everything. There are two threaded rods that go through the housing for the racks. 
um, and it holds the plates in place and once you take those out the whole thing kind of falls apart in which case you can't really work on them up there anyway um, you've got to take the whole thing out so uh, basically what is just a quick inspection job could turn into a whole mission and uh, and basically taking it on the dock and, and cleaning it through with air hoses and stuff like that we're not at that stage so I'm going to make the sensible decision and uh, I'm going to not try and fix what's not broken. I've learned my lesson once with the outdoor furler uh, when I took that apart for inspection and we ended up having the whole thing rebuilt. Um, there was nothing wrong with it, it was just I couldn't get the pin out and to get the pin out I destroyed the whole casing. So I'm not going to do the same mistake here. I'm going to leave it and uh, if there is any problems then at least I know what I'm faced with. The steering rod goes all the way through to here. Through here there are two um, threaded rods with uh, caps on either end. They're going to need a little bit of uh, anti-corrosion treatment on them here on the other side. Um, and these are the rack and pinion sets. So basically it's a, it's like a rod with teeth on it and when you turn the wheel it, it moves that rod forward which presses these cables here which go through to the back the stern below the bunk and steers the rudder via a quadrant. So there's no hydraulics there, it's purely uh, mechanical. Now a word from our sponsor. Have you ever dreamt of a lifestyle like this? Well here's some really exciting news for you. You can have access to comprehensive guidance crafted by us, the Renker and Woody, seasoned world cruisers, yachting instructors and parents. We've taught thousands of people how to sail and as a cruising family we've sailed tens of thousands of miles across the world's oceans. Now you can access that knowledge from our Patreon platform. So if you want to shift your life from traditional school and work towards boat schooling, remote working, minimalist living and a remarkable life experience, then find out how by visiting www.mothershipadrift.com or click on the links in the description below. See you out there. So a lot of time, thought and work has gone into this, so please check it out. There's a lot there for anybody who's planning to do a sail away adventure. Now back to the business of fixing boats. So before I put it all back together, I gave it a bit of a clean up with some wire wool and some emery cloth. I remove the old Sikaflex and give it a bit of a clean up. Tiny bit of grease on there just to stop anything seizing up. Because if you put too much in then and you get the salt air in there, it kind of all cakes up. That makes everything horrible. A lot of ammo owners um, have had a problem where the uh, entire rack is seized up, but actually um, it's not the rack, it's the it's the grease inside that cakes up. After 20 years of being in there, it uh, it kind of gets some salt, salt air in there and cakes up to a to a really kind of like horrible adhesive. It makes the steering really difficult. So uh, what Bryce has done, um, and he's a, he's a motor mechanic, so he's had years of experience in this sort of thing. He rigged up an air compressor and then he forced kerosene through it to clean out all the old grease then he put white spirit through it and then uh, once that was all cleared out then he put the uh, the grease in to re-grease it and uh, apparently it's as smooth as so uh, in future if I have to do that uh, job I know how to do it so then it was just a matter of reassembling it all so mark it there so get the orientation what I might do is put some a uh, little bit of silicon around there because there's a gap there I wonder if a little bit of water is getting in Clean up with some acetone. So forget romance, nothing reaffirms a relationship more mm -hmm. than doing a bit of boat maintenance together. Okay. Starboard, yeah? yeah. Okay, that's 
shift it. Okay, I, I, it's just coming out now. I don't want to. No, it's okay. Ready? So I think that that's the stuff that gets caked up inside the cables and uh, basically seizes the whole thing. Fixie Boat filming and editing is thirsty work. So I'd just like to thank Christoph this week for hitting that thanks button and buying me a beer. If you'd like to prevent my dehydration while sat in this engine bay, you'll find that thanks button below this video. That's it, thanks for watching, and be sure to check out our other sailing and travel channel, Mother Ship Adrift. Thanks in particular to our patrons who make all things possible. If you want to become a patron, just follow the links in the description below. You can also check out our merch store with mugs and t-shirts with our Mother Ship branding.